Laura, where are you from? Uh, I was born in Los Angeles. Really? Yes. You're a La Jolla Kind of. Now, I mean, I was born in Los Angeles. I lived in a place called La Crescenta, which is north of Pasadena. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fancy neighborhood. Uh, oh, I get no. La I Crescenta and La Cunata are we very were, fancy. We were not fancy. And oh. then I moved to Florida, which is the least fancy state. Oh, yeah. And I lived there for 10 years. Okay. Well, you haven't been to Alabama, so. Is Alabama less fancy than Florida? I don't, I don't so. know. I mean, according to <laughs> the <laughs> news, Florida is the worst place in the world. Well, that's just because there's so many more people there. Is that why? It's a high volume means a higher percentage of Cra- in- crazy. Insanity. But, yeah. Yeah. I think Alabama's worse. Wait, so how long were you in L.A. for? I was in L.A. for uh, 10 years, and then I lived in Florida for 10 years. And so then what did back. your parents do out here in La Crescenta? My father was a computer programmer. Oh, nice. And my mother was for, a... For who? Uh, for, oh God, like Disney, NBC. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Smart guy. He was super smart. Self-taught in like the 80s, had a computer program and then just... Steve Jobs style. Right? Um, so yeah, he he worked as that. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And then what did your mom do? She stayed, uh, took care of my brother and I. Nice. Stayed home, yeah. Older brother, younger brother? Ooh, older brother. Why did you go, you? Because I didn't mean to bring up my brother because everything I talk about is going to be a major bummer. My brother passed away. Oh, no. I'm so, so sorry. No, no, no. It's fine. <laughs> I just, I keep bringing up slavery no. and now my dead family members. How long um, ago did he pass away? Oh, 10 years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's fine. I wouldn't normally bring him up. <laughs> oh, no. It was, it's because you asked about my mom. It's your fault. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, no, no. It's totally fine. You know, I just read Martin Short's book. Have you read that? Yeah. Let's talk about Rosé again. Um, no, what? I haven't. <laughs> let's, change, let's change the subject back to wine. Oh, I didn't want... Oh, then I won't. But you should read Martin Short's book. He, he lost both his parents before he was 20. He lost a brother when he was a kid. I don't know any of this. And then he lost his wife like five years ago. Shut up. And during an interview, Kathy Lee asked him about his wife who had passed away a few years ago. So now I feel like Kathy Lee. And I Did Kathy Lee not know she had died? No, she didn't. Well, that's very different. Like, she should know that. You right. don't need to know about my dead brother. Oh, <laughs> that's geez. none of your business. <laughs> Anyways, it was, a, it was a very poignant m- memoir and it was very... I talked- should read it. He's fantastic. Yeah, he is. And now I, I'm... Part of me wants to email his manager and be like, yo, I got this little boutique podcast, but I would love if Marty came on. <laughs> <laughs> so I can bring up his dead wife no, immediately. No! <laughs> so how's your wife, Marty? <laughs> Um, I'm a shock jock. I could just bring up. <laughs> Anyways. So uh, why did your parents move to Florida? What was that about? Oh, God. Um, it seems like your dad was successful. He was working in the entertainment world, it seems like, a little bit adjacent. He, he didn't move. <laughs> just- oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm like just, the Howard Stern of just my mom, awkward family situation. My brother and I, yeah, my mom, my brother, and I in a U-Haul uh, drove to uh, Florida. Okay, so they got divorced. They well, yes, kind of. They sure, yeah, they got divorced. And <laughs> <laughs> they separated and then they got divorced like a year later. Okay. It's all the same. Okay, yeah. You were how old? Ten. I was not. Oh, that's got to be tough. We like okay. So my mom was like. Let's go. We're going to go to Florida and spend the summer there when I was like nine. Mm. And she was like, it's beautiful. There's crystal clear water as far as the eye can see. Yeah. And my brother and I were so excited. We were like, that sounds amazing. And then we get there and we're, we're duped. And we stayed in a studio apartment oh, on one mattress. This is pre Airbnb, obviously. <laughs> yes. My mom and brother and I lived on one mattress <laughs> in a studio apartment in Florida with no kitchen. It was like a bachelor apartment that was a refrigerator. I don't know what. And then we had a hot plate. For a couple months. That was like our summer. And then my brother and I were like, well, I'm so glad that's over because that was the worst summer of our lives. And my yeah. mom was like, we're moving there. <laughs> okay, so, so you we had... came back to LA and then we went back to Florida. So you had no idea that the divorce was happening when it was happening? No. Oh my God. I thought my parents were great. Really? Yeah. So how did you take it then? That's got to be tough for a 10. I feel like that's the wrong age to it go through a divorce. Ne- I don't think there's any right age. but Well, ideally, I was two, so I don't remember. You were two? It. Yeah. That helped. I don't know. It all goes in the subconscious. <laughs> it all, you know, who knows? But I mean, any age is not ideal. I guess we, I, I would say like, if I was going to have kids, I would say, can we just keep it together for 20 years? That's what you should do. And then we can melt down and go insane that's and what, whatever, but just 20 years. That's what everyone should do. Right? Because yeah. I feel like if you're 20 and your parents get divorced, like it sucks, but you're not going to like, right. you you're know. not going to put it on you. I feel, I feel right. like if I was 10, I would be like, what did I do? What? Well, it's because it was my fault. It. That's why. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It wasn't my fault. Well, I know, but did you feel you must have felt, felt that way? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but it's this funny because you're, bones people when like, you're a Laura. kid, you're tough and you just kind of go with it. And I remember like very distinctly feeling like divorce is fine. I don't know what the big deal is. And then 
uh, and then in my twenties being like, Oh wait, realizing how big of a deal it is. But when you're a kid, you just kind of like keep marching on. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So yeah, I never, I don't remember well. like internalizing it as much when I was a kid. Well, that's good. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, manifested in my teens. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> sure. What were you like as a kid? You mentioned tough. Were you a tough kid or uh, was that just in that no, instance? I mean, were... I was tough because of life, you know, as a, Left to my own devices, I was like a very like soft little baby who just wanted to be left alone playing right. dolls. But then life was like, you will be tough by yeah. the end of this journey. Yeah, they call Locker's Center the Compton of the North. Locker Center, exactly. That's <laughs> see, like right, like so. I was living in Locker Center, which is an idyllic mountain. Yeah, town. and it's secluded, it's surrounded by mountains. It's beautiful. My parents are together, as far as I know, very happy. Right. And then we moved to Florida, and it's very tough. Public school. I was in private school in Locker Sana. Oh, of course you were. It's Locker Sana. Things changed. <laughs> I love how you said it wasn't that nice, but it, it's Locker Sana is pretty damn nice. <laughs> we lived in a tiny house, though. That's why oh, I okay. say that. Yeah. It was tiny, well, tiny. Minimalism is hot right now. I mean, so. it's probably like $800,000 now. <laughs> yeah. But oh, back then it was like 30 or something. It was tiny. Yeah. Does your dad live still, still live in the same place? No, he lives oh. in the Philippines, of course. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> why did I ask that question? Uh,. <laughs> Did you were you performing as a kid? Were you doing any yeah. acting or anything? Yeah, I Music? was always I was always in need of attention. Um, you since were I was like five. No, I mean I'm I'm being self deprecating. I am fine without attention. Um, but when I was five, I was uh, I started you know singing and dancing and doing all that stuff. Uh, by your choice or by something your parents wanted you to do? Oh, no, no. My parents were very against it. <laughs> really? Why was that? I mean, they didn't want me to like professionally pursue it when I was that young. Gotcha. In a smart way, probably. Right. Um, but yeah. So you what did we, what were you doing? Ballet um, or yeah, all that stuff. And like, theater and or like what? Uh, my school always had something going on, you know, private schools. Um, and, uh, and so I was always performing in whatever came, whatever I could perform in. That's amazing. Yeah, it sounds like you, you had a ton of opportunity and you took took it by the reins and went. With I it. mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. In I think if I had stayed in L.A., probably would have been more opportunity. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. There's very, very little opportunity. For so what? where were you living in Florida? Where was the studio apartment at? Um, d uh, Clearwater. And that's where you moved to afterwards? Tampa Bay. Yeah, then we moved into, yeah. So what was, was that transition, aside from the divorce, was that transition hard for you to make new friends and adjust to your new surrounding? I think so. I mean, I would imagine, right? I went to public school for the first time. I learned that there was a difference between black people and white people for the first time. That's a... I didn't know there was a difference before. <laughs> no one ever told me, and I and I didn't know about racism. So sure. I learned all about that day one of public school. Um, and then <laughs> it was crazy. Florida's crazy. Florida's tough. It's a tough place. Why is it so tough? It's just like a lot of poverty and angry people. And I mean, I have lovely friends from Florida, and like I, there's you know good parts, but it's definitely very very different than Los Angeles. Right. It's very segregated, and it's very. Oh, this is fascinating. Oh yeah. Because I was thinking Florida as I I went to Disney World like every year as a kid. I feel like so I have oh, such yeah, no, lovely <laughs> memories of D Disney World and traveling over to Cocoa Beach That's and funny. Ron John Surf Shop. Yeah, I and think Checkers and Kissimmee me totally. love their milkshakes. Checkers French fries are amazing. And I like I told my boyfriend about Florida, and then he came to visit my hometown. He was like, "This is great. It's like a little beach town." Right. But when you grew up there, so there's a lot of teen pregnancy, a lot of drugs, a lot of STDs, a lot of. I dropped out of high school. A lot of my friends dropped out of high school. I think all my friends except for one dropped out of high school. Wow. All my friends except for one got pregnant um, wow. multiple times and in most cases. Um, no, yeah, I was the one, but I'm, I'm, I don't have STDs and I'm not pregnant right now. I don't have any kids, um, just for the record. Uh, but yeah, so most of my, most of my friends went through that. So thing. I guess I don't understand why it was such a... What what was the reasoning? Was it just there was a lot of crime, a lot of opportunity, a lot of spring break attitudes where you're just like having fun? I think I, there's no no I accountability. Think, no, I think I think well, a lot of it is like a lot of I was attracted to people who were troubled because I was coming off of a divorce and I was like, let's fucking get into trouble. Yeah. You know? So most of my friends didn't have dads and gotcha. most of my friends had working moms gotcha. and like, then you're just kind of like, what? there's no rules. Like, let's do anything. Yeah, and then yeah, you yeah. just get into shenanigans. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's not to say there aren't people in my hometown, people that come from great families that like are doing great. And some girls I went to school with are like nurses and doctors and they're doing great. Right. But then there's, there was like a different side of it that I found myself involved in that was like a darker CD. What kind of shenanigans are you doing? You know. Doing crimes uh, stuff here? No. I mean, not me. I wasn't doing crimes. Um, I never did any crimes. 
But, you know, like uh, just drinking and hanging out. Sure. Fight night. Just degenerate you know? stuff Liquid like that. Blue had fight night on Friday nights where you get into a Oh, you don't have to tell me about Liquid tank. Blue. I yeah, know you know about Liquid Blue. They give you they give you boxing gloves and you literally can box whoever you want Wait, to. that's a bar, Liquid Blue? It's a bar, Liquid Blue. It's closed down now, but they used to have fight night. And you could just be like, hey, Trina, you and I, let's go box. And that's then ridiculous. you'd get into the ring and you'd box Did you participate? <laughs> I didn't. I jello wrestled at Greenbacks, which As was down the street tradition. on Thursday nights. Um, I used to jello wrestle, and I used to MC a jello wrestling. That what? was yeah. That was like my first taste of comedy. I would I would be like rip her shirt off at this bar. <laughs> yeah. Wow. When I was sixteen. Wow. I know. That sounds it's super crazy. illegal on many levels. I know, but I had a fake ID, and they didn't really care. So it was pretty easy to get alcohol and all that. Yeah, fake ideas were easy to come by, and uh, you know. Now that you mention it, Kimbo Slice. Do you know Kimbo Slice? Uh -uh. He's he was that big black uh, street fighter that YouTube made successful, and then he got into UFC because he fought people in Florida on streets. Oh, I like him. Now it sounds exactly like what you grew up in. Florida's nuts, man. (laughs) It's nuts. It's hot. And people are bored, and there's tons of drugs. Like we're so close well, to so all the. Well, what I'm picturing waters. is, yeah, like spring break. Like people go down there and just go crazy, and yeah. I feel like that that attitude that's just must permeate. Day. Yeah, exactly. that's every day. It, that's it's crazy. just like it was. You know, you're drunk from like Thursday to Monday wow. morning. Wow. You know, Thursday night to Monday morning, you're just kind of like drunk. That's crazy. Yeah, that is some shenanigans right there. It's you know. <laughs> it Wait, so how big was your high school? You went to Tampa Bay, like. The one high school in Tampa? No, no, no. no. There's, there's many. Yeah, but I went to Clearwater. Uh, I went to Dunedin High School. And then was that a big high school then? Was yeah, it, like it was very big. It was metal detectors at the door big? or no, I mean, there should have been. There was it was, uh, <laughs> it was under construction when I went there. So I think now it's actually a really nice high school. Oh, wow. But when I went there, there, there was like the toilets would back up and there would be like shit everywhere. It would smell like shit everywhere. And they would they'd fence us in. So we'd be like shoving each other to get to class. And then there'd be like a construction guy with like sparks flying from his Jeez. tool. Yeah, like it was crazy. It, it was, <laughs> the entire time I was there, it was under construction. That's ridiculous. But I think now it's super nice they built a nice school that's crazy yeah so there's probably not a lot of arts there so in high school you're probably not doing any I sort did, of like, drama but i don't remember what we did and then i did a lot of like summer programs well, dr- your drama was jello wrestling though. i know my drama was <laughs> in my life <laughs> the heels of jello wrestling my friends and i brought the drama <laughs> so you dropped out what was the reasoning behind that Oh God, um, my <laughs> my brother was ill, and so we would travel a lot mm-hmm. for him to get treatment. We would go to like Mexico. I, I lived in Tijuana for a little while wow. <laughs> when I was fifteen, and then I lived in a uh, Gainesville. We went to Gainesville for a little while, and I kept like getting behind, and then I would get caught up, and I would go back to school, and then we would leave again for like a couple months, and then I would get behind oh, again. It was the whole thing. So and my mom would leave, so I would live by myself. <laughs> I will live on myself. I like that you laugh and you get uncomfortable. <laughs> it's just crazy. It's so crazy and I'm fine with it, but I feel like when I tell other people, they're like, uh, like it makes other people feel sad, but it's fine. Um, when I was 13 is when she started leaving. So I would be by myself for a couple months. Leaving and with your brother. To leaving get with my brother. Back well. To get him back well. So I'd be like getting myself to school and stuff and then it would reach a point where she was like, I want you to come with me. So then I would be there. And wow, that's tough. Yeah, it was... And these aren't these aren't like renowned physicians they're going to in, in Tijuana. Tijuana? Um, no, it's more like this hasn't been approved by the FDA yet, but so we'll it's try experimental anything. Stuff. Yeah, wow, yeah, that's gotta was, be hard. It was. I don't know. I just my mom and I would just like you know drink uh, sangrias and <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> chill out because <laughs> it's legal there in Mexico, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't okay. know what the age is, but I they didn't seem to care. There. No, no, Gainesville. No. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. So you dropped out when you were how old? 15 or 16 oh, really early yeah, 10th grade i think wow. yeah mm-hmm. so then you're i assume that's around the time when your brother passes away no he no no uh, he made it through that whatever that issue was yeah that was a long journey <laughs> he he passed away when i was 19 okay yeah so between 15 and 19 what are you doing are you are you working are you constantly yeah, traveling I'm, working. I'm like i'm like you know all the odd jobs that you mentioned i worked like a billion odd jobs i oh, was wow. like a body wrap technician in a spa i was a teacher's assistant at a private school i worked in the mall making jewelry at a little kiosk i worked at hooters um i worked as a teen uh yeah when i was 16 i was a hostess i couldn't be a waitress you can't be a waitress until you're 18 okay. um sorry. but i was a hostess i wore a very you know reasonable polo shirt um <laughs> and stood at the door but uh yeah so I was so was this because money was tight or it was because it you were it was going through all of it was going into your brother's health yeah we didn't 
I don't remember ever like, I mean, we had money earlier on when my parents first got divorced and then that went away and then I just always worked. It was never, like I was telemarketing when I was 14. What? I was telemarketing like 25 hours a week. <laughs> but was this something your mom was like, yo, Laura, you got to get a job? Or no, was it something it was where just you just like, like if you want I have stuff, nothing to do? No, it was like, if you want anything, you should have a job. And you had to pay for Yeah, but she paid for like living. I mean, she paid for like toilet paper and that right. kind of stuff. Um and uh but yeah, gas, clothes, right. alcohol. This is fascinating. Food, movies. That was, you know, I had to have a job. That's crazy. I never thought about it. It was just like, a, yeah, if you want something. I mean, I worked a job, job, but it was like a, pushing carts at a grocery store and it was on like weekends only. No, I worked from like 5 to 9 on weeknights and then 9 to 5 on Saturday. That's insane. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> but I Plus, you had to MC the Jello pudding. Plus, I had fights. to MC the Jello wrestling, which was, you know, that only paid a seventy-five dollar bar tab. That was my payment for that job. That's not bad. Though. Not it's bad, pretty, right? It's solid. <laughs> that's a seventy-five. In Florida, that's got to get you a lot of toasted, alcohol. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was worth it. <laughs> 